Welcome to the Protagonist Pub. My name is Tammy, and this is where characters gather. And today, we're going to do my first quarter 2024 book haul. And I'm laughing silently, silently to myself because I just filmed a video, which you will probably see after this one, in which I talk about consumerism and book hauls and I understand the irony thereof. Let's just say that. I will say, however, that the majority of the books in this book haul were Goodreads giveaways. And I'm going to have to do a second part of this book haul um, with digital purchases. So let's do the Goodreads giveaways first. Um... So my philosophy on Goodreads giveaways is that it is a wonderful way to try a new author, a new to me author, a debut author, an author outside my comfort zone, a genre outside my comfort zone with no risk to myself. If I love the book, I'll recommend it. I will seek the author out again. If I didn't like the book, no harm, no foul. It goes in my unhaul pile and it gets passed on to my library and somebody else can buy it from the library bookshop. So that is in general, my philosophy for Goodreads giveaways. And that is the majority of my use for Goodreads. So, let's talk about those books first. I'm not going to talk about any any book in any great detail. So, and these aren't in any particular order in which I receive them. The first up is Uncanny, Uncanny Vows by Laura Ann Gilman. This is the second book in a series. I have not read the first book. I do not know anything about the author. Um... Do know that the back of this book sounds intriguing and I do have the first book in this series um, potentially on order when I place my Amazon order so I'm in intrigued enough by the back of the second book to pick up the first book and read them in order I will read you the uh, blurb at the top of the back of the book Following the events of the high stakes and propulsive uncanny times, Rosemary, Rosemary and Aaron Harker, along with their supernatural hound, Botheration, have been given a new assignment to investigate. But the Harkers believe it's a setup, and there's something far more ancient and deadly instead. I just think it sounds interesting. And, you know, I love a good dog story, and that's a big dog, not a little dog. If you all know, I have not little dogs. So, yes. It is labeled as fiction. It's published by Saga Press, so I know it's fantasy fiction at that. So we shall see. The next up is by Darby Kane. That is called The Engagement Party. This is published by William Morrow. This is... I want to say suspense. And again, it sounded interesting to me. And I like the cover. So, next up is a romance that publishes in June of 2024. That is Match Me If You Can. I know nothing about this book or this author. And it is an uncorrected proof, and there is no detail. The author is Swati Hedge. No, oh, there's a little blurb in the beginning. A young mag magazine writer in Mumbai must prove her matchmaking skills 
and contend with growing feelings for her close family friend in this debut romance. So, unique setting for me. We'll try it and see. Next up is an author I have not read. That is Jamie Day, One Big Happy Family. This is published by St. Martin's. This is Suspense. And I love this cover. I really do. I don't, you know, like the built-in sticker on the front of the cover that takes away from the cover, but it's a free book. I'm not going to complain. And this one is on sale in July. So those are the first four. Excuse me, there's a piece of glue that's bugging me. Okay, glue off. Um, the next one is a book by the author of, I want to say it's Thistlefoot, let me see. It is Thistlefoot. That is Jenna Rose Nethercott. That is 50 Beasts to Break Your Heart. I love this cover. I have not yet read Thistlefoot. It is on my list of things I want to read. And I was lucky enough to win this Goodreads. So we will see. It looks like it's... I, I don't know. I, I know nothing. So we shall see. Next up is one of the most controversial books of the year. And I won this right before the controversy broke. That is Crown of Starlight by Kate Corin. Um, I almost didn't show this one. This has been pulled by her publisher, which is Delray, from publication. She has been dropped by her publisher. There is an entire controversy about this author and her insecurities and behavior. I am on the fence about reading this one. It sounds interesting. It doesn't sound interesting. Do I want to support? I, I'm, I'm on the fence. I don't know. If I don't read it, it will go to the library and maybe someone else will, you know, pick it up. Okay, two more left. These are both, I believe, thrillers. I think this one's historical fiction. This is The Busy Body by Kemper Donovan. And I want to say this one has released. This is a very nice hardback, by the way. This is published by Kens Kensington. I think this is published. Um, but this isn't overly long little over 300 pages and it sounds interesting. I will read you the um, blurb in the inside cover. In this fre fresh, fast-paced, modern murder mystery, the first in a wildly funny and innovative new series, a ghost writer is chosen to collaborate on a presidential candidate's memoir, only to discover just how much trouble a smart woman with time on her hands can get up to. Yeah, I am very interested in this one. This is probably being read sooner rather than later, so we shall see. And last but not least from Goodreads, at least for physical copies, this one is on sale June 25th of 2024, is All the Colors of the Dark by Chris Whitaker. I believe this is historical fiction. It is published by Crown Publishing. And... Nope, this is a thriller. I know nothing about this book. There is no blurb on the inside. The Pirate and the Beekeeper is the first um, title page of the novel. It says 1975. So, you know, somewhat historical. I've never read anything by this author either, so... I'm interested. We shall see if it's 
worthy. So those are my physical um, wins from Goodreads. Next up is my purchases, my actual, I went out and purchased books and this was a box set, which I of course taken out of the box set because I don't need the box. Um, that is the first three books in the um, Expanse series by James S.A. Corey. And it was less expensive to buy the box set of the first three books than it was to buy books one and two independently. So I bought the first three books. As you know, the first book is a Dave book for 2024. I am currently reading it and yes, I am loving it. Okay. Editing Tammy, the day I filmed this, as soon as I was done, I got three books in the mail and I picked up three more books at the library bookshop. So I'm going to add those in because they were technically purchased in the first quarter or received in the first quarter. So let's add those in. So first are the three um, book mail books. The first one is Never Date a Roommate by Paula Ottoman. Um, this sounds really cute. I don't know. I have never heard of this author. It's by a um, imprint of Harlequin. So it's obviously a contemporary romance. And I will uh, read you the top blurb on the back. A hilarious, heartwarming romance from celebrated Brazilian author Paula Old and I about finding happiness in unexpected places, maybe even your very own apartment. To find true happiness, they'll have to fake it first. It's got a very charming cover, so we shall see. The next one is The Inheritance by Joanna Goodman. And I think this has a beautiful cover and it's paperback with deckled edges which is always a very nice touch and it has inside flaps. So this is a very nice paperback. I am again, another new to me author. Um, have read the back or rather the inside flap. The back is all author blurbs. Um, says this is a compulsively readable mother-daughter story in which two women who share a difficult past must come together to claim the future they deserve. Um, I have read the inside flap. The storyline sounds great. I think there's probably going to be feminist bent that I am probably not going to be on board with. The tip off there is the quote unquote future they deserve um no one deserves anything you get things yourself you are not entitled to anything so we shall see i don't know when i'm going to get to this it's 302 pages so it's not even very long so we'll see I don't know. So the last book that arrived, I am very excited about. I have not, I, the author has a book that has been on my wish list for, or my TBR forever. I don't own it. I'm going to pick it up. That is Mr. Penumbra's 24 hour library. I will put a picture right here. Um, I really want to read that book. And unbeknownst to me, when I, did the Goodreads giveaway for this one, even though it says it right here, right on the cover. I missed that. Um, he wrote this book. This is Moonbound by Robin Sloan. And I will read you the back for this one. Actually, I have to read Penumbra first. Robin Sloan expands the Penumbra verse to a new, to new reaches of time and space in a rollicking far future adventure. It is 13,000 years from now. A lot has happened. And yet, a lot is still very familiar. Ariel is a boy in a remote village under a wizard's rule. 
Like many adventurers before him, Ariel, Ariel is called to explore a world full of eye-popping discoveries and challenges, unknown enemies, a mission, a mission to rescue the world. A girl. Here, as they say, be dragons. But none of this happens before Ariel encounters an entity from an earlier civilization, a sentient, sensitive, artificial intelligence with a special perspective on all human history. And who come, becomes both Ariel's greatest ally and our narrator? Moonbound is an adventure into the richest depths of story itself from the creator of the Penumbraverse, Robin Sloan. It is a deeply satisfying epic of ancient scale, blasted through an imaginative prism of one of our most forward-thinking writers. And this is only the beginning. So, A, I need to pick up Mr. Penumbra, and then I need to dive into this, because this just sounds like fascinating sci-fi for me, and, and, and fantasy, and I, yeah... I think I'm all over that. So, the next three are library finds. First up would be the Lost and Found Bookshop by Susan Wiggs. Hey, I love this cover. I haven't read the inside flap. I don't want to read the inside flap. It's enough. It's beautiful cover, and it's about a bookshop. I'm here for that. The next one I actually own on my Nook. I have read the first book of the duology, which is called the Back, which is called Backyard. So this is Front Yard by Norman Draper. And if they had had Backyard, even though I've already read it, I would have picked it up because I love these covers. They are so me. They're floral. They're beautiful. They're delicate. And I loved Backyard. It is a sassy sarcastic glimpse into suburbia and I loved it. So I cannot wait to dive into this one. I'll read you the top blurb on the back. Livia is a quiet Midwestern suburb known for his green thumb residents and their impeccable yards. But this summer they'll be digging up a lot more than weeds. I yeah, Backyard was great. So this is probably going to end up on my summer reading list. Probably in August when I'm done with Dave's challenge. And my brain is just like, I don't want to read Dave's stuff anymore. Yeah. Okay. And the last one has been, I don't know who recommended this book. I don't know where I saw it. It has been on my wish list for a while. And it just magically appeared at the library. And that is... Let's see if I can get this tag off the front. Comes right off. Always good. The first book in a new series. It is Singapore S Sapphire by A.M. Stewart. New to me series. New to me author. Um, it was published in 2018. It is a Harriet Gordon mystery. And you don't s see a lot of books set in Singapore. It's historical fiction. It's a mystery. As you all know, those are all things that work for me. And, um, yeah, uh, I, I'm all over it. There's a cast of characters. There's a pronunciation guide for the, um, language used in the book. At least I saw a pronunciation guide. Maybe I'm wrong. No, I can't find it. I could have sworn there was. Yeah, there is. So there's a glossary for Dutch words, Malay words, and other words. So, yeah, this is probably going to end up in August as an August read too, just because I've been waiting so long to read this, and I, I want to know if I want to buy more. Oh, yeah. So those were my quick edits, and back to regular scheduled programming. Um, trying to think if I've purchased anything digitally. I do not believe so. Okay, so last up are my library purchases for 
the first quarter of 2024. And first up would be The Summer Wives by Patrice Williams. I have never read anything by her. I love the cover of this book. It is intriguing. And I will read you the back of this one. Um, the summer of 1951, Miranda Schuler arrives on elite, secretive Winthrop Island as a schoolgirl from the margins of high society. With her beautiful mother, when her beautiful mother marries Hugh Fisher, whose estate on Winthrop overlooks its famous lighthouse, Miranda is catapulted into a heady world, heady new world of pedigrees and cocktails, status and swimming pools. Isabel Fisher, Miranda's new stepsister, is eager, eager to draw Miranda into the arcane customs of Winthrop society. That's just the first paragraph. It sounds very interesting to me. Thus, I picked it up. She has great covers in general, so I will probably pick up more as I find them. Death of Riley by Reese Bowen. This is the second book in the series. I have not read the first one. The first one is called... What? I don't know. Um, this is the Molly Murphy series. This one is set in New York. Okay, Fireball's done talking. Next up is the Counterfeit Hair... Heiress by Tasha Alexander. This is in the Lady Jane Grey series, Emily, Lady Emily Mystery series. I have the first one on Kindle. I'm not sure what number this is in the series. It is down there. Um, so we shall see. I like these. I, I like her covers. Um, so we'll see if I like her writing style. Okay. Next up is a book I mentioned in the Irish fiction. Or the next two books are were mentioned in the Irish fiction video, which I will link down below. Um, the first up is Maeve's Times by Maeve Binchy. I talked about this one in particular in the video, so I won't do it here. And the second book I picked up by the same author is uh, Minding Frankie. And I love that cover. I just, it's just adorable. So I'll read you the back of this one. Minding Frankie is a story about unconventional families, relationships which quite aren't, aren't quite what they seem, and the child at the heart of everyone's lives. Baby Frankie is born into an unusual family. Her mother is desperate to find someone to take care of her child, and she doesn't have much time. Noel doesn't seem to be the most promising of fathers, but, but despite everything, he could be Frankie's best hope. As for Lisa, she is prepared to give up everything for the man she loves. Surely he's, go he's going to love her back. And Moira is having none of it. She knows what's right and has the power to change the course of Frankie's life. But Moira is hiding her own secrets. It sounds delightful. It sounds like something I'm going to enjoy. So, <sighs> when I get finished reading for Dave, I will pick up one of these and, and, and read it. I promise. Okay. And next up was a book I was looking for when I did my um, So Annoyed video, which I'll link down below. And it's the one with the deckled edges. And that is the Weight of Ink by Rachel Kaddish. Um, this is um, Jewish fiction. Um, in fact, it has won the Association of Jewish Libraries Jewish Fiction Award. I will read you the inside flap. Set in the London of the 1660s and of the early 2000s, the Weight of Ink is the interwoven tale of two women of remarkable intellect. Est Esther Valquez, an immigrant from Amsterdam who is permitted to scribe for a blind rabbi just before plague hits the city, and Helen Watt, an ailing historian with a love of Jewish history. When Helen is summoned by a former student to view a cache by a newly discovered 17th century Jewish 
of newly discovered 17th century Jewish documents, she enlists the help of Aaron Levy, an American graduate student as impatient as he is charming, and embarks on one last project to determine the identity of the scri document scribe, the elusive elf. Electrifying and ambitious, The Weight of Ink is the story of women separated by centuries and the choices and sacrifices they must make in order to re reconcile the life of the heart and mind. I think this book sounds incredibly wonderful and immersive. There are letters in here. It isn't just straight narrative. It, the, you know, there's some epistolary stuff. I am looking forward to this one. I've heard nothing but good things about it. And yeah, Tammy is very much looking forward to this. So, so that is my first quarter book haul. It uh, is far less than I purchased for the first quarter of 2023. And I'm proud of myself for that. These are all books I want to read if I purchase them, either through the library or independently. And the Goodreads giveaways are all books that I'm interested in trying the authors or the genre. And, you know, it's worth trying new stuff. I'm a big proponent in trying new authors and new genres and dipping your toes in, so to speak. So... I'm dipping my toes in. What did you get in the first quarter book-wise that you're just excited about? Leave a comment down below, like, and subscribe, and I will see you here next time at the Protagonist Pub.